Hello and greetings fellow StarCrafters, PGL Milncraft here from ProGameEndings.com with a 1 versus 1 between the blue Zerg player, E.G. Idra, versus the red Protoss player, Liquid Huck. Now, this is, uh, this is from, as I said in the previous match, this is from the North American Invitational, which is the kind of precursor tournament to the BlizzCon tournament that they have, in which they have all the regions battle against each other. And I don't remember if I mentioned the exact format, but this is double elimination. So Idra, I'm going to spoil this, so if you haven't watched the other series against Liquid Sheth, then tell me. Or, well, don't tell me, rather, but <laughs> don't, don't listen, but... Sheth, having beaten Idra in the previous game, means that Idra is on his death throes right now. Uh, so he needs to win this match against Huck, which is very difficult because Huck is a very capable Protoss player. And I, don't, I think uh, I think Idra's Zerg versus Protoss leads at least a little to be desired. I think he's better against Terran. Um, but, maybe, you know, maybe I'm wrong. But either way, Huck is certainly a formidable opponent, and Idra admitted as much at the... Uh, I admitted as much at MLG, actually, during the interview, uh, which actually happened probably, like, uh, 20 minutes ago, or 30 minutes ago, or something like that, that I just watched. Uh, yeah, if you guys aren't watching MLG Raleigh, definitely do that. I've been watching it uh, most of the day today. Uh, very exciting. Um, I really enjoy watching it, obviously. I'm a huge fan of StarCraft games in general. And uh, a lot of very interesting matches, a lot of very, very good play from a lot of different players. Uh, Puma, as I've, you know, casted earlier, he's been playing particularly well, and nice little micro from Huck there. Huck well known for his micro with his probe, able to keep it alive, do a little bit of harassment. He's actually not dealing that much damage on the uh, drone, so the drone's in no danger of being taken out or anything, but uh, the probe did get there early enough that he was able to stop the pool from, or from the, from the hatchery rather, hatch first from going down, uh, so Idra didn't even try it. Uh, he might have been doing that build anyway, I didn't actually get a look at that. Idra meanwhile has got an overlord going ahead and scouting over here, so he's not going to need to drone scout since Protoss don't get any anti-air until they get a Cybernetics Core built. And actually, Huck got a second gas already. I suppose... Yeah, that is actually pretty early for a second gas. Normally, you don't get your second gas until after the Cybernetics Core. Um, just kind of typically speaking. So Huck is going for a gas-heavy build. Um, if I had to guess, I would say Stargate play. Kind of probably something like Phoenix's. Um, but it's possible he could be going for... Uh, I guess he could be going for Void Rays as well. Um... I don't think he'd be going for a Robo. That doesn't seem to make much sense to me. But what remains to be seen, whenever I say a player doesn't pr is probably not going a build, they tend to go that build. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll be able to figure it out. But that gas is slightly earlier than normal, so I don't think he's going for um, just like a typical 3-gate expansion or something like that. Idris Queen is just popping almost immediately, injecting Larva. Always a good plan. Uh, staying on top of your inject Larvas is incredibly essential for maintaining a good army for Zerg. And it helps save you from having to get a macro hatchery to make sure you don't get larva blocked later in the game. Uh, which is very important for Zerg players in general. Because obviously, you know, if you're larva blocked, and he is in fact going for a Stargate, it remains to be seen whether he's going to be going for Phoenixes or going for Void Rays. If he's doing Void Rays, he could be doing both as well, actually. He could be getting uh, Phoenixes and then Void Rays. And I don't think Idra is actually going to spot this. Does he not? A, he did not put an Overlord on this corner. He sent the Overlord back, actually. So Idra does not know that the Stargate is there. Now, what he did see was both gases going up early. So he does know that there were early gases. So that's going to be a little bit of a hint. Uh, but he doesn't know exactly what tack that Huck is going. And two gateways there tells me... Hmm, I want to say avoid Ray all in, uh, possibly for Huck. But, you know, uh, it's... It's possible he's just going to be going some Phoenixes, and the gateways are going to be to make sure he doesn't get overrun by Zerglings as he's going Phoenixes. Uh, as that is a very common kind of Zerg response, is all you do is just get tons and tons of links. And actually, we see a lot of links coming out. 20 links in production for Idra. Now it's 14. But those links are all going to hatch. Speed is going to finish. And, I mean, Huck's got a decent defense here. He does have at least one force field, but if he moves his army out, he could be caught in a very uncomfortable position. We do have Void Rays coming in, so it looks like Huck was going for the all-in. Um, although he is placing the pile on there. I'm not sure if that's to trick Idra, or if he is actually planning on expanding out of this. Very rare to expand out of this, though. And Idra does have lots and lots of lings, though. Idra is going to be well prepared for that. He is also getting Spore Crawler, so he can feel it out. He knows what's up. And, oh, unfortunate that the... Uh, Oh, geez, and the wall was not perfect with the Zealot either. The Void Ray is going to finish. Huck's going to want to put up another force field. Nice job there. Able to keep those Zerglings away. 
Good job for, um, in defense from Huck right there. And looks like Idre is just going to back away with those lings just a little bit. And Huck is getting sentries and more zealots to help deal with those lings. He wants to make sure he doesn't lose to any force right here. And oh, force field is going to trap. I was wondering if force field was going to go down or not. It is going to trap those Zerglings, and that Zealot survives with exactly one hit point. That's all Huck needs. That Zealot's A going to be able to deal its damage. And actually, maybe Huck is, in fact, just going for the expansion. Uh, he was getting the... Maybe he just chose to get the early Stargate, either to throw Idra off, make Idra get some Spore Crawlers that he didn't want to get, or potentially to... Oh, and looks like they're going to be attacking here. Uh, is he going to be able to stop the cancel? Yes, he's going to be able to stop the cancel. Uh, it's also possible he just wanted to deal some damage while he was expanding as well. Uh, those Zealots are actually dealing a lot of damage to the Lings. I don't think Idris should be engaging here. He's actually not going to get a single Zealot kill. All three of which are now incredibly low health at 1 life, 28 life, and 32 life. But since their shields recharge relatively quickly, uh, that's not going to matter a whole lot. Uh, the Void Rays, meanwhile, have a lot of kills right here. They've killed a lot of the Queens. Looks like one Void Warrior was taken out, though, and now it's going to be uh, Huck's turn to see how much damage he can deal. He wants to make sure to try to engage outside of the Spore Crawlers, which, of course, can't be picked up by the Phoenixes, and very nice move charging up on top of the spawning pool right there. Looks like Idris is going to move his Spore Crawler. Huck is going to instead move his forces out. He does have... Oh, his force goes just a little bit off. Not able to quite surround the Queen, but the Queen was forced off creep. Oh, that's a lot of lings, though. I think those lings would be able to at least clean up the sentries, if not the zealots as well, especially with Queen support and the zealots at extremely low life. Looks like the lings will be able to clean up all of those forces. The void ray reduced to lower health as well. Um, Huck is behind on supply right now. Nice placement of the spore crawler there is going to... Nice job. Barely able to place the forces just out of reach and able to pick up that queen as well. Looks like Idra does not quite have enough spore crawlers, but these Zerglings are going to surround. He wants to move those Zerglings forward if he's watching and able to get a full surround of the Zealots. Is he going to be able to do that? Uh, looks like Hawk's going to turn to fight anyway because he realizes he's not going to be able to get back, and it is in fact going to take out his forces. Void Ray Phoenix are going around scouting for either Overlords or Expansions. Uh, I don't imagine an expansion going down for Idra in that particular moment, uh, but he is temporarily supply blocked. That's important to realize as he does have a... Well, he has at least three larvae sitting around right now, and he's missed any eject because he's lost so many queens, so his uh, larva production is a little low, and you can tell that because he's stacking so many resources. He tries to move in with the Zerglings up here, but those are going to be forced out by Liquid Huck, and Liquid Huck's expansion is actually very safe right now, um, and well, I mean, it's just well defended. These sentries are placed in such a perfect position as to prevent any sort of kind of aggression from the Lynx. So good job for Huck there. Meanwhile, Idra is getting not only a Hydralis Den to help deal with the Star Stargate, but also a Nidus Network. That's going to be very interesting. He's not going to have an Overlord alive to spot for that, so the Phoenix is going to clear them out. I assume he'll get another one in range, although he's probably going to want to upgrade Overlord movement to be able to get one in range in time to be able to spot the high ground. Uh, force fields. Oh, very nice. That last force field, which is what did it. Look at him. He took out all of those Zerglings. Uh... Idra is going to have a very difficult time holding this off. He's going to build as many Hydras as he can. He's building nine right now. That is going to be very formidable against this force. However, Guardian Shield is pretty effective uh, for sentries as well as force fields to keep these Hydras, Hydralisks in place so that the so that the Zealots are able to slice them apart. Zealots do have very high DPS. They have high DPS. Yeah, uh, very high DPS when they're in range there. And the Void Raid Phoenix are still alive, able to pick up the Queen. And force field to stop reinforcements on the top. Nice job there. That Phoenix is going to get taken out. Not the biggest deal in the world. Oh, Phoenix barely survives. Wow, at four hit points. Able to pick up a Hydra as well. Hydra should focus down that Phoenix, actually. Focus down. It just needs one shot. Oh, too late now. And the Hydras on top are not able to reinforce. Hydra range is not finished either, so they're not being as effective as they could be. That Spore Crawler got taken out. And now it looks like the Hatchery is going to go down as well. And he just keeps force fielding the top. Now, Idra has drones there, but he doesn't have he doesn't have enough gas to build a NIDA network to let, NIDA's network to let his units come down, and the drones would only be able to engage alone, which is just results in all of them being taken out, and units are building on the bottom, which are not going to do any good. And Huck, with a very nice timing attack right at the end, did a terrific job, able to take out Idra in this game. Uh, that was actually a, a very interesting game because. Huck was sort of doing an all-in build. He might have just been doing an expansion build uh, with air pressure against Idra, but either way, he was doing a very aggressive build, but Idra also did an aggressive build with Lynx. 
uh, but Idris just were not as effective as uh, as Hux Void Rays, which were able to get you know five kills on one and two kills on the other. That was a mix of you know drones, uh, queens, and and um, overlords. Uh, and so it looks like Idra just was not able to recover from that. If the attack had happened a little bit later and all of the Hydralists were already out and down here, then it looks like Idra actually would have been able to hold that. But his Hydralist den was just a little bit too late, and Hawk was able to punish him for that, able to move his gateway forces in and just, you know, force field the ramp, prevent any reinforcements from coming down, take out the expansion, and from then it was, you know, it was all she wrote. So really good play from both players. Actually, I thought uh, I didn't think I think I thought Didra played very well. It's just Hawk is a very good player, very difficult to deal with, and so uh, very good game. We're gonna move on to game number two. This is PGL Milncraft signing out.